the town. Charlestown is the bank robbery capital of America. Robbing banks is like a trade passed down from father to son. Doug, played by Ben Affleck, now wants out. Only there are some people who really don't want to let him get out. These include the very volatile Jim, played to perfection by Jeremy Renner, and The Florist, a crime lord portrayed by Pete Postlethwaite, if that's how you pronounce that. This man is never seen in this movie without flowers near him, and yet he always inspires dread. That takes serious balls. To further complicate matters, Doug is falling in love with a woman that they used as a hostage on their latest heist, and the FBI are tracking down the entire gang. Yes. Well, weren't you going to ask if you should go watch the movie? I was thinking if you maybe don't have that much time to watch the entire review. Yes. Watch the movie. This is the kind of movie that we want to encourage. This is the kind of movie we want to see more of. I did not watch Ben Affleck's directorial debut. Not yet. I am getting to it. The man can direct. No doubt about that. As an actor, he's pretty good. You know. But as a director, fantastic. You should not miss his direction. I am starting to wonder if he'll ever get to scripts that don't involve kidnappings. The two main reasons to watch this are Ben Affleck's direction and some incredible acting. This is the best ensemble cast I've seen for several years. I've already mentioned Renner and Pete, but Chris Cooper also makes a dynamite impact with an absolutely tiny amount of screen time. Also, we get that white chick from Vicky Cristina Barcelona who isn't Scarlett Johansson, and she's really good too. Blake Lively is very convincing as a worn-down, druggy prostitute. Oh, and before anybody asks about the Boston accents, I'm not really qualified to judge. All I can say is that several of the people do go for one. I couldn't really tell you if they succeed or if it sounds ridiculous. Also, you may want to brush up on slang and or bring a dictionary to the theater. I was quite happy that there were subtitles. The dialogue is very clever. At times it gets dangerously close to being overwritten, but it always works. Affleck is very good as the lead and you can really feel his yearning to get away from this environment. His famous charm works. And I'm sure the fact that he has sex scenes has nothing to do with the fact that he helped write it. The story grips you immediately. There isn't like a transition where you gradually get to... No, it just grabs you and you're there. And it has you for 125 minutes. This has a lot of character development. And you really care when something important happens to a character. The pacing is also spot on. This gives you some room to breathe after a scene of tension. And frankly, in this, the tension gets so damn thick, you'll be walking out of the theater with an ulcer. The heist scenes are incredibly intense and littered with all these tiny little details that really solidify the fact that these people know exactly what they're doing and this makes the inevitable confrontation between them and the law enforcement squads much, much grander. There's a lot of brutal violence in this, and it's all filmed in close-up, and often with a handheld camera, making it very effective. You really feel the blows. On the subject of blows, the twists in the story are like punches to the gut. They always work, and they always add something. Flesh out something. 
at one point in this we get a car chase and it's filmed entirely in medium shots and close-ups. It is incredibly intense. The shootouts have a real Michael Mann quality to them. Very authentic, high on realism, and you really feel like every single bullet is potentially fatal. This has beautiful cinematography and editing. At points this uses silence or seemingly uneventful shots impossibly well, increasing the effect when this explodes into violence. Nothing feels gratuitous either. Everything feels like that's how it is in that environment. For all the grit in this, there is also humor, and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And yes, on the whole, there is some Hollywood to it. But it is an incredibly compelling story, fantastic acting, and just a damn good time at the theater. Again, this is the kind of thing we want to make sure Hollywood makes more of. How many bank robbery movies have there been made? Quite a lot. I already mentioned Michael Mann. He himself has made a couple. When one can still be made that has an impact, that's really a sign of talent. Ben, stay in the director's chair. Also, stay with Garner. I'm not really joking. We already know that she can beat you up. I mean, she did it on the big screen. I don't think she's forgotten those moves. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of The Town. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Okay, am I the only one who practically said out loud when they saw the, I guess, assistant bank director or whatever? It's Jack! Come on, it's Jack from Alias! Come on, beat them up, Jack. We know you can do it. Okay, okay, I know it's technically Victor Garber, but maybe it's really Jack who's playing Victor Garber. I mean, he is CIA. You never know. Spy stuff. I would say the only time the violence didn't entirely work was when we saw that close-up of Jim shooting one of the bottle throwers. That was really the only time where it didn't quite have the impact that, you know, you'd think it'd have. And, you know, we're all entitled a single slip-up, especially in a movie of so many bullseyes. I will never lie to you again. Go ahead, ask me anything. Oh, and before you even bring it up, no, I have no idea how my career survived Ghibli. No, I've never killed anyone. But, um, don't ask me that again after this next heist. And Ben jumps from one rooftop to another. I guess he didn't quite get that out of his system, making Daredevil. Were we supposed to laugh when Claire says, no, there's no cops, and we get that wide shot and see all the cops? Because several people in my theater chuckled at it. I really liked how, after all that, she said, Doug, Doug, I really want you to come. It'll be like one of my sunny days. That was just perfect. And the reveal on the cops and the feds, when she gets up and starts to walk away with the phone and then we see that they're there. You know, it's not the first time we've seen something like that, but I'm not sure I've seen someone be walking, you know, get up and be walking with the phone. That kind of had me thinking, oh, she, she is alone, and then you find out she isn't. That was really good. Even though I knew absolutely nothing about them other than their names, which I've since forgotten, the deaths 
of Slim and Driver McFatso were really effective. I mean, you know, Slim gets up at just the wrong time after the flashbang. You know, maybe that was his first flashbang. Maybe he doesn't have combat experience. The others seem like they know how to handle themselves. And Driver McFatso sacrifices himself. I mean, he can't have thought that he was going to make it out, you know, with all of those cops. Jim's last stand, which was really more of a sit at first, was really effective. And you kind of felt, I mean, yes, he was kind of a psychopath, really dangerous to his surroundings, but you still got attached to him. You still cared when he was gunned down, you know? This did really well at establishing something and then bringing it back. You know, first we see Jim, you know, have a gun, hold it to bottle thrower, number one, and then he fires it. And then during the fight between him and Doug, you know, it's revealed that he has a gun in the back of his pants. Then he draws it, and, you know, we're thinking, fuck, he's gonna shoot him because we've already seen what this man is capable of. And towards someone he didn't even have any personal grudge towards. Of course, we do find out that Jim is, in fact, very protective of Doug. That was a really good plot point, too, that the reason he killed that guy served nine years, hence the line, I waited nine years for you, was because he was protecting Doug. And I already mentioned the sunny days thing. It was very sweet, the ending with, you know, she gets the money and she spends them on an ice skating rink for the kids. And then we see one of them, you know, not being good at skating after several of them seem quite good at it. One of them sort of slips. And, you know, without it being, like, funny or something, it's just a natural moment. Okay, I wasn't entirely certain, but the hooker... Christina or something, was she Jim's sister? Because there was that line about Doug says, you know, he's not gonna spend his life with Jim and Jim's sister. Isn't it a little nasty that Jim refers to Doug as his brother and then is still okay with having his brother fuck his sister as Hollywood as it was? Did anyone not get a kick out of Doug solving his florist problem? And, you know, because there was return fire by Pete, you had that fear that, oh, please be wearing a vest. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the town. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.